I, I think it's going to be um, the value that we attach to meaningful social interactions. And I think that, um, you know, that we've lost sight of that uh, in the past 30 years. We've overemphasized success and material consumption and the like. And what the pandemic is teaching people is how absolutely sacred our best relationships are and the meaningful moments that we can have with people. And we will, I, I think that, that the value of those social utilities, if you will, will be much higher coming out of the pandemic. We're all sort of circling around a set of new forms of wisdom out of the pandemic. And so what you hear people saying are things like, wow, time is slowing down. I can slow down time. Um, sometimes too much, but, but that's an op option that we have in our fast paced lives. Wow, social interactions and hugging people are the most important thing in my life. And I feel depressed without them. And I'll return to that. Or I don't need to shop and burn carbon. <laughs> you know, fuel so much. And so I think um, we collectively, as we move through this, this pandemic, this panic and this trauma, we'll start to arrive at a set of core ethical principles like we tend to uh, and, and go forward with those more explicitly recognized. I think that it is the um, suspicion of uh, the wrong people. And you know, people have written about this. It's the suspicion uh, you know, that you see in other countries of people in healthcare, you know, where they're attacked in Mexico and China. Uh, it is the um, suspicion of people who are of different color than we are. Um, and uh, and it is the um, lack of, uh, and it is the suspicion of science and the suspicion of data um, that we have strong ways of understanding this epidemic that have really been undermined in the United States by kind of the sus suspicion the pandemics elicit. So I think it's, it's um, that's very worrisome. Is, is those three things, but I think that there's a lot of, actually there's a lot of progress that will be made out of that. I, I think that the first thing that we're gonna really need is, uh, is a uh, return to the faith of our institutions that, um, that hold up society and you know, healthcare institutions being most prominent and then science that really can track and map uh, the virus. And then I think that the, um, the second thing that we really need to be rethinking in terms of wisdom going forward is how we think about who's doing the hard work to you know, the nurses and the doctors and the, the people in long-term uh, aging facilities that are right on the front line. So there are a lot of these suspicions and biases that are flaring up right now uh, cre creating impediments for understanding that we're going to have to kind of tackle in a reasoned way. One of the things that's happened in our understanding of the pandemic is because it's been in the United States where it's, it, we are the worst example of adapting to this, this health challenge is, um, there has been a lot of uh, fear and a lot of shying away from truths uh, and a, a failure to understand this. And so I would ask the people in this context of, you know, polarization and, and a failing to adhere to health guidelines and try, trying to understand what the phenomenon is. Uh, and as we shut down and have this period of solitude and, and, um, which is hard, that people ask themselves um, what, what they're finding really meaningful at this moment and to develop that as they go forward. You know, so for me, it has returned me to this more local, simple life of walking with friends and family and cooking more together and, um, and you know, sharing uh, sort of sources of 
entertainment that can uh, and understanding and, and get back to what's most local and and we do that by just asking yourself you know what are the moments that really meant something to me where i teared up or i felt uplifted and then to use those as lessons for for more wisdom